Hi, and welcome to another screencast from Winans Creative. Uh, today we're going to talk about something that uh, a lot of people have asked about, and that's how to quickly set up a blog within TypoLite. Um, it's actually not that difficult at all. TypoLite makes it really easy. Um, like some of the core modules in TypoLite, the way that it works is that you have, you can have what's essentially a listing page, uh, in which case I'm going to start out with a blank page here. Uh, going to be the home page of my site. Uh, this is where all your blog posts are going to get listed. Uh, and then what you have is a reader page uh, where you can view the full uh, set of uh, the, the full text of the article as well as be the ability to add comments. Um, and we're going to go ahead and add that now. So this is going to be our blog reader that's going to sit underneath our page. Um, we're also going to create what's called a blog archive page. This is where people are going to be able to go in and essentially um, browse past posts or posts by tags if you have the tag module installed as here. So you can see we have our home page with list of the pages, blog reader, and then our blog archive. Uh, next step is to create our actual news archive here. Um, I have a couple set up already, but let's just go ahead and create this one from scratch so you can see the process. Uh, title, screencast archive. We're going to call our make our redirect page here. That's going to be our reader. That's what's it's going to list the full context of that article. Uh, comments. Going to enable comments on here as well. There's some various options here. Uh, I'm going to check um, the ability to moderate those so that uh, I can basically approve those before they get listed on the website. Um, then there's a checkbox down here for generating an RSS feed in various formats here. Uh, I'm going to set that language to English. Uh, we're going to export the full articles as opposed to the news teasers. Uh, we're going to give it an alias here and this will essentially just create an XML file on the root of your site uh, that you can then add to your page layout for the purposes of uh, creating an RSS feed. Um, so let's save and edit that and create our first blog post. Create, Click new article. Um, we can name this test news. Uh, I have the tags extension on here so I can uh, add, quickly categorize these and possibly add a tag cloud to my blog page as well later on. Date automatically gets filled in as today's date, but you can pre-date or post the po uh, post date the post as well. News teaser. Uh, here is my teaser. This is what gets, dis gets displayed in the listing with a read more link if you'd like. Um, so that when you know you can kind of list not have to list the full blog post and then it can jump to the full text uh, so we're going to add the full text down in this text area down here and we can have the ability to add an image uh, add enclosures or downloadable files that you've uploaded to the site and be able to select those from your file system um, and also redirect target if you click on the help menu here you can see you can use the default which goes to your blog reader page uh, you can also uh, have the the listing uh, direct to a specific page on your website uh, as well as an article or even an external URL um, uh, also the options down here to disable comments or list the post as a featured item um, in the expert settings Publish settings, obviously we're going to publish and we can also schedule when it get, uh, can get live on the site or come down off of the, the listing as well. So we've got our first blog post in here, but as you can see our page is still blank. That's because we need to create a, a couple different modules first. Um, I've actually done a shortcut here and created uh, the four modules we're going to need for a basic blog. Uh, the first one is going to be our news list. This is our screencast lister module. We select news list as the module type. Uh, then we select our archive that we created up in our news uh, content up there. Uh, various settings such as the number of items per page, what filters we want to use, whether or not to only show featured items in this listing. Uh, very flexible in terms of how you can set it up. Uh, got a meta fields that you can include, date, author, comments, uh, things like that, and different templates that you can custom configure in the template editor if you'd like to do that as well. So I've just selected that archive for our lister. Um, we're also going to need a news reader module. This is the jump to kind of uh, page that displays the full post with the comments. Uh, I'm going to select my archive. Uh, same basic types of settings on here as well. Different templates and meta fields you can set up and select. Um, 
the next one is our news archive module and you can see they're all the, these four are pretty much the, the, the primary ones we're dealing with here uh, select the archive I want to deal with uh, various settings such as whether or not if somebody happens to land on that page I want them to jump to the current uh, setting that I uh, set down here day month or year uh, tag filters uh, meta fields template settings as well and the last module we're going to create is a news archive menu this allows us to essentially browse past posts or uh, and by month or year or however we want to set that up day month or year um, and redirect page for that we're going to set to be our blog archive page that we set up so that whenever somebody clicks on that menu item it will go to the archive um, so now still nothing on the front end here but what we need, uh, need to do now is simply add um, to our main listing page here uh, our news list module which I've already pre-done uh, if you refresh now here's our first uh, essentially post now I, I cheated a little and that uh, there's some CSS already applied on here but you can see it's all set up in its listing and, and, and any additional blog posts would kind of sc scroll down the screen there as well um, in order to make it kind of function somewhat like a normal blog we have to go to our blog reader page and drop in a module content element there that is our blog reader so we'll select that from down here and now you'll see that when we click on the header it takes us to our reader page with the full text and the ability to add a comment um, the last kind of thing I need to add on here, well, not the last, the second to last, on the blog archive, if we want people to be able to browse those past posts. So let's add our archive there, um, which is all well and good, but now nobody can, there's no way for people to really browse to the archive, and we need to add that archive menu essentially to the sidebar of the page. So let's actually go in to the right column of our home page here going to click in and drop our news archive menu on there and then what I'm also going to do is just take this right column article and feed it across my reader and my archive page as well so that they all have this blog archive menu in the right column and what you'll see what happens at that point as soon as I save this is that now across my all my blog pages I now have a little archive menu that lists it by uh, month essentially which is how I had set it up so if I click on that it's going to give me essentially all the news items that I've had listed from uh, basically the uh, my entire month of March 2010 and that's pretty much the basics. Um, I could go into a little bit more detail, such as the tags extension, tag clouds, and things like that. But essentially, after that, you've got a full functioning blog. So uh, hopefully, I'll go into a, a little more detail in a further screencast. But hopefully, that could, and I'm hopeful that that gives you a, a little bit better idea about how to go about setting one up in TypoLite. Uh, thanks for your time. Hope you enjoyed it.